Hey, today I'm talking about Zoe's Extraordinary Christmas, Roxanne, and Mirror Mask. Just three completely random movies, because that's the vibe I was in. First up is Zoe's Extraordinary Christmas. This movie came out just last year, and it is the follow-up to the two seasons of the delightful show Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. And actually, I'm gonna kind of talk about the show in general as well as the movie, because it's kind of hard to not talk about both. So the basic premise is Jane Levy, the love of my life. <sighs> Ugh. It's like I've fallen so madly in love with her, but not in like a creepy stalker way. Like I don't like do anything weird. It's just more like in a grand poetic way of just like <sighs> seeing her sing makes my heart sing, and it's just like it's great. Anyway, she plays this 30-year-old woman who works at this tech company, and her dad is dying of a rare disease, and she's kind of closed off. But then one day, she suddenly gets this ability to hear people's innermost emotions via pop songs. Like either time will stop and the person will sing, or like time will continue while they're watching them sing and dance. It varies. So yes, this show is technically a karaoke musical, but it is incredible. Like, just looking at the poster and seeing some of the ads to the movie, you kind of think it's a very lighthearted show, and it does kind of come off as a lighthearted show. But honestly, this is probably like the most emotionally raw show I've seen in a good long time, if not ever. Just because the characters literally can't be guarded because it's their innermost emotions are what are coming out. So it's just like you get baseline raw emotion with zero filters getting beautifully singed right in your face and it's just amazing. I love this show so much. I madly fell in love with the show around episode 8. Episode 8 is incredible. It's so good. Ugh. And just, I mean I love the emotional rawness of it and like the fact that they're able to balance a lot of lightheartedness with the very dark themes and subject matters that they get into so well. But I also just love Jane so much. Her character here is Zoe is just incredibly relatable, that's for sure. But then also the way she portrays her, just like her acting style of just like, well, she can be very bubbly, but she can be very closed off. And she's constantly in a struggle, but in a very relatable way of just like not knowing like, you know, how to push boundaries and stuff. I and mean, also like trying to live her own life, but I, having to deal with all of these songs all the time. But yeah, again, to praise Jane even more, she's a great singer. I love all the times she gets to sing. She doesn't get to sing a whole lot because, you know, the premise is listening to other people's emotions, but they do come up with ways where we can hear her emotions, and that's great. And I especially, especially love her dancing. She is an insanely talented dancer. Like, I'm just mesmerized by her movements every time she gets to dance. And honestly, my favorite songs in the show are from when she gets to sing and dance. I think my favorite songs from the show from her would definitely be I Got the Music in Me. She sings Crazy. I loved that one a lot. And then from the movie, I really, really loved it's a dual song, so one character is singing, just the two of us, and then Jane is singing We Need a Little Christmas something. I can't read the last word. That song's incredible, and her dance in that is amazing. Putting aside all my gushing, I definitely, definitely recommend this show, especially the first season. The first season is incredible. It definitely has a bit of a sophomore slump, but I think it recovers great, and the movie is a nice little end cap. It does give a nice closure to the whole thing, but it, it leaves it open enough, so I hope one day we do get some more, because I'm just, ugh. I'm madly in love with this show. Even though I just finished it, I kind of want to rewatch it immediately. I don't think I've ever cried to a TV show this much before, because it was, it was, it was like every other episode that I was just like bawling. I cried so much in episode eight. It's so good. You're definitely in for a good time if you give this show slash movie a watch. The next up is and it has nothing to do with that song. I just like singing that. This is a Steve Martin film. He wrote it, produced it, and starred in it. And it is based on Cyrano de Bergerac. If hearing that sounds familiar, that's because I recently watched Cyrano starring Peter Dinklage. And watching that inspired me to watch this. This is a more modern retelling of it. It's not the exact same story, though it does definitely follow the structure of the original play. It's really solid. It's, you know, it's a Steve Martin comedy. I will say 
say I wasn't super huge into the comedy aspects. Like I didn't really laugh a ton, but the jokes weren't like, I was never annoyed by the jokes or like rolling my eyes at the jokes. Even though it didn't connect to the jokes, I don't think they brought the movie down at all. What I will say though, is this movie has a ton of heart and it does heart really, really well. That's why I was able to put it in the quite like section is because it just, it really nailed the emotions. And like, even though the premise kind of is a bit silly with like the ugly guy writing letters for this handsome dude to help him win over this beautiful woman, they updated in a way that it makes sense. It works in a modern context. It still is a little silly, but like I was easily able to suspend my disbelief. And I was a little worried that Steve Martin's ridiculous nose was gonna be a bit distracting, but honestly, I was able to accept it fairly quickly. I will say I did enjoy Peter Dinklage's Cyrano more, and I would more so recommend that one over this one, though Peter's Cyrano is definitely more schmaltzy, way more schmaltzy than this one is. This one still has some schmaltz, and I do realize that could be the big hurdle. This one's technically kind of easier to get into if you're not in the most schmaltzy mood, but I still prefer and would more so recommend Peter Dinklage's more schmaltzy Cyrano. This one's still good though, and it's definitely worth a watch. And lastly is... Mirror Mask. This is a 2005 film written by Neil Gaiman, recommended to me by my very lovely friend, and it's hard to describe the premise. It's kind of like Alice in Wonderland meets Wizard of Oz with some labyrinth in there, and then like the sound effects from The Matrix, which was really weird, and then it's got the visuals of Doctor Who from when it first came back in the mid so kind of like low budget TV stuff. And this apparently was like a direct to DVD film. So that really explains the quality of the visuals. This was a very, very interesting film. I, I liked it, I enjoyed it. It's weird and abstract and out there, but not as much so as I thought it was gonna be, which is weird though, cause it is very, like looking at a lot of the creatures in this movie, they're very, very strange. So it's weird that I was expecting more. I think I was just kind of thinking the story wouldn't be, as clear as it was because it definitely was like a very clear through line of like what was happening I don't know and like knowing that it's very dreamlike made me just very easily accept the movie for what it is I don't know the biggest hindrance to this movie is definitely the special effects they are <laughs> though I will say the edges were kind of softened on me because I watched a low quality version of this accidentally so it was more easy for me to kind of forgive the not great special effects because it was harder for me to see the not great in special effects. I would only recommend this movie if you think this is gonna be your vibe. Like if the posters and like how I describe the story seems like something you'd be interested in, then it's probably gonna be up your alley. But like, it's definitely a weird, I guess quirky movie that's not for everyone. And if the aesthetic really isn't your vibe, you're not gonna be forgiving to this film and you're not gonna have as good of an experience as you should. So yeah, so I basically cautionly recommend it. It's still good. I still enjoyed it. It's just not a movie for everyone. All right, do you know for today's rankings? First up, we got Zoe's Extraordinary Christmas sitting at number 13 in the really like section. Love you, Jane. And then after that is Roxanne sitting in the quite like section at number 29. And then bringing up the rear is Mirror Mask sitting at number 36 at the top of the liked category. And this is out of a total of 60 old movies so far this year.